Hello beautiful souls and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing how I made this adorable little play mat and matching hedgehog toy. This turned out so cute. I purchased all of my fabric from Spotlight. So for one side of the blanket, I have this adorable flannelette fabric that's got the cutest little animals all over it. And then for the underneath of the playmat, I went with this uh, cotton drill. This is quite thick. I thought it would give a bit more cushion to the playmat. And then for the padding, I went with this bamboo wadding. So this is um, organic and breathable. So perfect for babies. For the sizing, I bought a meter of this fabric. I think it was about a meter wide as well. So here I'm just cutting off the trim that was on the side of the fabric. Then laid out the wadding flat on the carpet and laid my flannelette fabric down on top of that with the right side facing up. I then just took some pins and pinned all over the fabric to hold the wadding to the flannelette. I do recommend using safety pins over pins. If you have them available to you, you're just less likely to prick your finger or anything like that while you're sewing. Once that was all pinned down, I then cut the wadding to the same size as the flannelette. I then did a basting stitch around the entire edge just to hold the flannelette to the wadding. So once I had finished basting the entire thing, I then took all the pins back out. Here I'm laying out the base layer of the play mat. So if you're making this as well, make sure that your right side of the fabric is facing up and then place the right side of the flannelette fabric facing down onto the base layer. Next, I'm pinning all of the edges so that I can sew it together. I'm also going to leave a gap to turn it inside out. If you do make this, I recommend leaving the gap a little bit bigger than I did because the fabrics were quite thick. It was a little bit harder to turn inside out. I also like to pop in a pin horizontally so I remember not to sew in that section. Once I had finished sewing the edges, I then went around each corner and snipped it off like this. This just gives you a sharper corner when you turn it inside out. When turning it inside out, I found it easiest to feed my hand into the top corner and then pull that through first and then work by pulling each corner out. And because I was filming on the floor, Charlotte thought that it was playtime. So she came over for a little kiss and cuddle. And then of course, Moon thought that I was making this play mat for him. So he wanted to sit on it the whole time and I had a bit of trouble kicking him off. I think I'm going to have to make him his own special play mat. What do you guys think?
Once I had completely turned it inside out, I then grabbed a ruler and ran it along all of the inside edges just to press the seam out. This works well to push your corners out as well. Moving on to the opening, so I just made sure my seam allowance was tucked in neatly and then I pinned it down ready to sew. And then to finish, I sewed a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance and this also closed that opening that I just pinned together as well. So this is what the finished playmat looks like. It turned out so cute and it's so soft and plush. While I was making this, I was sharing it on Instagram on my stories and I decided that I wanted to make a little critter to match and I was tossing up between the little bear and the hedgehog. So I popped up a poll and most of you voted for the hedgehog so that's what I ended up making. For the hedgehog template, I drew a large circle and then a smaller circle. I originally drew the ears quite pointy and then I realized that hedgehogs have round ears so I do change that later on and then here I am drawing in the little spikes I do recommend folding your paper in half and drawing it um, that way um, I didn't think about this before I did it because I did it on a bit of a whim so there was no planning and then I'm taking some baking paper and folding it in half So I did just go back in and fix the spikes up so that the middle of the spike met the fold of the paper. This just makes it so much easier when you're cutting out the pattern. So here I am just tracing over the main part of the body and then folding it in half and cutting it out. And then I've gone ahead and repeated the exact same thing for the smaller section of the hedgehog. And then next I'm tracing the face and redrawing the ears to be more circular like they're meant to be. And then when tracing off the ears, make sure you add some extra seam allowance here because you want it to tuck behind the face. And then the same for the feet as well. For the largest piece of the hedgehog pattern, I cut out two layers. So I've just folded my fabric in half here. Uh, pinned it down and then cut it out And then for this smaller body piece, I only need to cut out one piece I realized that when I went to cut out the fabric um, So I've just folded that in half to save on cutting time and pinned it to a folded piece of fabric. For the face, feet and ears, I ended up using this cream felt. Um, I've just sped this up. Um, so you just cut out one of the face, um, two of the feet and two of the ears. For the face, I decided to stitch it in, so I've just created a little triangle for the nose and then I worked my way back and forth to fill it in. And for the eyes, I did a straight line and then two little angled lines off to each side and I just went over until I was happy with the thickness of the thread. For the ears, I folded them in half and then pinned them down. I also popped in a few stitches to hold them in place until 
I sewed the face on and then I also positioned where I wanted the little feet to go. To assemble the hedgehog, I started by sewing the face down and I probably left about a five millimeter seam allowance. And then I attached the smaller section to half of the larger section of the hedgehog and I left a small gap to pop some stuffing in here. So for the stuffing, I usually just buy the two pack of pillows from Kmart for $5. Um, you get lots of uh, stuffing or fill, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, it's very affordable. So I've just filled in that front piece and then stitched to close. And now I'm touching, attaching the two large pieces together and again, leaving a little opening to fill it with stuffing. And then once I'm done with that, I stitched it closed. And this is the finished result. It is so adorable. I'm so happy with how it turned out.